Hello and welcome to this section, Implementation. Well, this is it, the last section of the course. Well done for making it this far. Woohoo! But don't congratulate yourself too much just yet. This section's a biggie. You now know what quality management is, what the ISO 9001 is, and what's required for your own quality management system. But there's no point going this far and creating it if it's just going to sit on your hard drive or gather dust on one of your shelves. It needs to be set free, it needs to be given life, be put out there to evolve further. It needs to be implemented. This is quite a large section to actually cover, but it's broken down into logical steps and again bite-sized chunks. First off, we'll look at management responsibility. As these initiatives need to be led from top management, if it's just seen as part of a pet project or a fad and not given the authority and the backing, it will fail. Management should know what the customer requirements are and direct this into the creation of the quality management system, as well as to assign the required resources. We'll also look at other management responsibilities, including quality policy and how it identifies the main goals of the QMS, planning, responsibility and authority of others within the organisation, communication, and also importantly, management review as certain aspects of the QMS will need to be regularly reviewed to make sure that the goals are being achieved. We're then going to move on to rollout and a suggested rollout procedure utilising a steering team to lead the implementation project. After this we're going to look at some tips and tricks that I've gleaned from others as well as my own experience on implementing a QMS. This is by no means a definitive list and should only be seen as a guide as each implementation will be unique but the fundamental requirements will remain the same. Next we'll look at the PDCA cycle. At this point you might not actually know what that is but by the end of this section you'll have an intimate knowledge and understanding of why the plan, do, check, act cycle is a foundation of all the ISO management standards. Nearing the end of this, the last section, we'll look at one of the cornerstones of any total quality management process, not only the ISO 9001, but any, and that is continual improvement. What drives continual improvement? How do you actually identify what needs to be improved? principles of continual improvement as well as the processes to be incorporated. These will all be covered in this section. Now then, this last section was originally incorporated into a continual improvement lesson, but I felt that it needed a section on its own, as these principles have become a strong contributor and fundamental part of lean manufacturing, and that is Kazen. So without further ado, let's get started with the last section. Five point one Management Commitment. The standard recognises that an effective quality program requires the involvement and commitment of the organization's top management. Therefore, the standard assigns top management the following responsibilities. To oversee the creation of the quality management system, the QMS. Communicating the importance of meeting requirements, including customer, legal and regulatory requirements. Establish the quality policy and the quality objectives. Communicating with parties responsible for product and service quality providing adequate resources for the operation of the QMS, reviewing the operation of the QMS. 5.2 Customer Focus Top management must ensure that customer requirements are understood and met with the goal 
of improving customer satisfaction. 5.3 Quality Policy The quality policy identifies the main goals of the QMS. The quality policy must be appropriate to the organisation's purpose, include a commitment to meet customer, legal and regulatory requirements, create a background for establishing quality objectives, communicated throughout the organisation, review of ongoing suitability to the needs of the organisation and the customers. 5.4 Planning 5.4.1 Quality Objectives Establish measurable quality objectives that support the quality policy and communicate them throughout the organisation. 5.4.2 QMS Planning Plan the QMS so that its quality objectives are met and so the system continues to work as it's changed to incorporate improvements. 5.5 Responsibility 5.5.1 Responsibility and Authority Effective work depends on clear understanding of each person's responsibility and authority. Therefore, responsibility and authority must be defined and communicated. 5.5.2 Management Representative Top management must appoint a manager to have ongoing operational responsibility for the QMS. This person is referred to as the management representative. The duties of the management representative include ensuring that the processes needed for the QMS are established, implemented and maintained, reporting on the performance of the QMS and any improvements needed, promoting awareness of customer requirements throughout the organisation. 5.5.3 Internal Communication Top management needs to set up an effective system of communication to ensure effective operation of the QMS. 5.6 Management Review 5.6.1 General Top management is required to regularly review certain aspects of the QMS to make sure that the goals are being achieved and to look for ways to improve the QMS. The review must cover suitability, adequacy and effectiveness of the QMS. The review also includes assessing opportunities for improvement and needed changes to the QMS, quality policy and quality objectives. Records of these reviews must be kept. 5.6.2 Review Input These meetings must address the following areas Internal audit results Customer feedback How well processes have been working how well products have been meeting requirements, status of previously identified problems, items identified for follow-up in previous management reviews, planned process or product changes that could affect quality, recommendations for improvement generated through the operation of the QMS. 5.6.3 Review Output These reviews result in decisions and actions relating to improving the QMS and improving the product, the need for additional resources including human resources. Hello. This is actually going to be quite a short video because your company or yourself will probably have um, various ways of rolling out um, either software or new ways of working or any implementation. You've probably already got a system for actually doing that. So this video is more just um, some additional pointers to include or to look out for. That being said, please go ahead and look at the rest of the video. Thank you. What is a steering team? A team led by top management that will coordinate and lead the implementation project. The ISO steering team will identify, 
what procedures need to be developed and identify people to work on the procedure, they make up the task team for the procedure. Lead each team. Assign start dates and completion dates for each team and put together a Gantt chart for the project. Not all teams will be active at one time. Meet on a scheduled basis to evaluate progress, answer questions from the teams and evaluate resources needed for the implementation. Review and approve procedures as they're completed. Rollout. One, train employees on the basics of the ISO 9001. Two, task teams hold team meetings to review procedure templates and current processes, review gap analysis results, edit procedure templates for the organization, submit the edited procedure to the ISO steering team for approval, take any necessary action to implement the new procedure. Three, the ISO steering team will review the procedures, they will approve or suggest changes. Four, the new QMS will be used for several months whilst records are collected and improvements made. Number one, establish commitment. Implementation takes time and resources. Make sure you have commitment before starting this project. Tips. Know why you're implementing the ISO 9001. Is it because a client or a market is asking for you to register? Is it for the internal benefits? Is the motivation coming from executive management? Keep the reasons for implementing visible during the project to retain commitment and stay focused on the end goal. Assign an ISO steering team. This team should be made up of management from the different areas of the company, including the management representative and the people that have the authority to devote resources to the project and remove roadblocks. Common setbacks. Assigning responsibility for implementation to one person or department. The ISO 9001 Quality Management System is a management system. It is not a quality control program and cannot be implemented by quality assurance alone. Losing commitment during the project. During implementation, other projects come up that compete for people's time and resources. Ask decision makers if the ISO implementation is still a goal. Two, prepare an implementation. A good project plan is a key part of a successful project. Tips. Conduct a gap analysis. Compare your current system to the requirements of the standard. Determine what's already in place and what needs to be implemented. From this, you can prepare task list for each of the sections of the standard. Have the ISO steering team create point teams for each of the sections that apply to your organization. Determine team members and the timeline for each team. Use information from the gap analysis and task lists to determine the appropriate people for the teams and establish the timeline. Common setbacks. Proceeding without a plan. Without a plan, projects tend to run indefinitely without showing measurable progress. By having a plan, you have a specific deadline to meet. You can show progress as you meet the deadlines and take actions if you're not meeting the deadlines. Not having the ISO steering team approve and support the plan. The ISO steering team will be watching the timeline, coordinating and implementing the plan. They should have the input and the approval of the plan, or better yet, prepare the plan. Kick off the project in a big way. Let everyone in the company know you have started the project. Hold basic ISO 9001 training sessions for all employees. Tips. Include some sort of celebration in the kickoff. 
Examples include a lunch for employees, a picnic, prizes or a cake. Use a training and celebration to inform employees of the plan and timeline. Tell the employees how they'll be involved and how they'll be affected by the project. Communicate why this will be good for the company and good for the employees. Common setbacks. No kickoff. Employees that are working on the project are aware, but others in the company are not. When the new procedures are implemented, employees don't know why, and there's little support for the ISO project. Non-conformances are commonplace in this environment. Training on ISO 9001, but no information on why the company is doing this, or how the employees will be involved. This can result in the employees thinking, another management program, how long will this one last? Number four, design and document the QMS. Use information from the gap analysis in the project plan. Use people currently involved in each process to make changes to the existing process and bring it into compliance with the standard. Tip, use the ISO steering team and the point teams for the design and the documentation. The ISO steering team meets on a regular basis. During these meetings, the team reviews the timeline, reviews what the point teams are working on, removes roadblocks, resolves conflicts, and reassigns resources as needed to keep the project on track. The point teams meet on an as-needed basis, according to the timeline. When the point teams meet, they address the tasks on the task list. Spread out the point teams on the timeline so you don't have too many meetings at one time. For example, you may want to have the document control team meet early in the project to establish a system to collect and control the documents that will be generated. But the internal audit team would meet later in the process because audits will not begin until the system is complete. Keep the point teams on schedule. Review their task lists and the ISO steering team meetings. Watch for problems and delays and give them help as soon as problems arise. Have each team member of the ISO steering team lead several point teams. Each point team should have an ISO steering team member for a leader. This allows you to coordinate the work of the different teams. Common setbacks. Poor team makeup. Make sure you include people involved in the process. For example, use purchasing staff for the purchasing team. Not meeting timelines. Establish realistic timelines for the plan. Teams should be able to meet them with small changes. If the teams are not expected to meet the deadlines, other tasks will take precedence. The project will drag on and lose energy. Misrepresentation of the standard. If you don't understand what's required by the standard, you may waste time and resources doing things that aren't required, frustrate team members, and miss important requirements of the standard. No central point of collection and control of new documents. If the document control system is not developed early on in the project, you create confusion on what documents are final, what has been approved. What is the final revision? Where's the electronic file? Has it been distributed? Not establishing document templates early on in the process. If you don't format and distribute documentation templates for the procedures and work instructions, you will not get consistent documents. You'll need to go back at the end of the project and redo all the documentation. Lack of communication during the project. Remember, employees that are not on point teams may not be hearing much about what's going on with the project. Employees may think that the project has faded away. Communicate with newsletters, bulletin boards or meetings. Number five, run the system for three months. Once a system is complete, follow documented procedures, conduct internal audits and management reviews and make improvements to the system. Tips. Start off with an additional training for all employees. Summarise the new quality system, emphasising their responsibilities. Review the timeline for running the system and conduct audits. Schedule internal audits so that you can audit the entire system. 
two times before the registration audit. This allows you to find non-conformances and fix them before the registrar comes in. Keep corrective actions on schedule. Hold management review at least once before your audit. That's required. More is better. Common setbacks. Lack of communication with employees, employees that have not been involved in the design and documentation of the quality system will not be aware of the requirements of the quality system. Training and communication are critical to get them involved. Lack of follow through on corrective actions. The new system will generate numerous corrective actions. If they're not investigated and completed, your system will not be ready for a registration audit. Ineffective management review. Management must take a close look at the data from the quality system, evaluate it and take action. What is the PDCA cycle? PDCA stands for Plan, Do, Check and Act. The Plan, Do, Check and Act cycle is a foundation of all ISO management system standards. The cycle ensures development, continuous improvement and control of the management system in question. It's a simple tool that ensures consistent monitoring of your organization's effectiveness. Plan. Establishing the architecture of your quality management system is covered in Clause 4.1 of the standard. Do. Implementing the plans and using the quality management system. Check. Reviewing whether the results are satisfactory at appropriate intervals against the ISO 9001 requirements. Act. Improving the quality management system or acting on the challenges and issues found in the reviews. Plan management responsibility. The PDCA cycle starts with management as it's up to them to identify appropriate processes and relevant areas to focus. Process identification. Appropriate process identification is essential to a practical system and the key to start with two processes management and operations, and then decide if sub-processes are necessary rather than working bottom-up. Each process also has to have an owner that is responsible for the activities that relate to the success criteria of the process. Planning and review. In order to successfully plan your quality system before implementation, a quality manual and a number of documents outlining procedures are required. The areas of documentation are Document control, records control, internal audit, non-conforming products, corrective action, preventative action. Additional procedures may be required if, without them, the process might end up having variable or unpredictable results, such as those caused by inexperienced staff, complicated parameters or other risks. The QMS is, after all, a system for minimising business risk. Fundamental directions. Owners or managers of your organisation should establish the fundamental direction of the QMS using the quality policy. There are several aspects that have to be thought through while designing the quality policy. Strategy should follow from the quality policy and the business environment. Process criteria should be aligned to the strategy. Customer focus. System processes have to be designed to ensure customer satisfaction. Resources, human, technological and environmental resources have to be put in place. The QMS requires that each company establish a way that their staff are competent. Do. Implementation and use. Fundamental direction. Having established the system, it has to be used to see that it works in the way that it was intended. It will be necessary to use the procedures, forms, equipment and instructions in the way that they were planned. Don't worry if some of the steps don't apply to you. ISO 9001 certification is designed for every type of organisation. Just work on the aspects that are relevant to you. 
The direction from your management and the assigned resources should make this part of the process fairly easy to implement. It's important to plan and define the processes all along the supply chain. This might include sales, purchasing, research and development, manufacturing, delivery. Check. Review of results. At appropriate intervals, the results of the QMS should be reviewed. The intervals will be short when the system is new, but can be longer once the QMS becomes mature. The reporting of results against a process success criteria should be regular and be used by management to ensure that the business is on track. Records should be designed to facilitate prompt recording as well as early detection of problems. Don't worry if your organisation has some problems. Every organisation has them but a successful one will identify these at an early stage and deal with them in an effective manner. Key milestone in evaluating the QMS is the management review, a meeting which assesses whether the, the QMS has succeeded in meeting strategic objectives, process success criteria and the ISO 9001 requirements. Reviewing perceived customer satisfaction is a key metric that has to be reviewed. It's recognised that the handling of complaints is not enough. Customers may just move their business to a competitor. Probably the most important characteristic of a successful quality management system is the internal audit. It's expected that an organisation that does not do internal audits is very likely to have their certification revoked if they've received the ISO 9001 certification, as their system is probably out of control. Act. Continuous improvement. Improvement is another name for dealing with challenges in an organisation. Challenges can be tackled either with corrective action or, preferably, with preventative action. All corrective actions need to be recorded and preventative actions designed for recurring problems. As a checklist, the following question should be asked. Customer focus. Have you found out what the customer's current and future needs and expectations are at a strategic level? Quality policy. Does it really suit your organisation and reflect your customer's expectations, your vision and mission and the requirements of the standard? Objectives. Are all the objectives measurable and linked in both the processes and to the strategies? Plan the system. Have all the responsibilities been identified and communicated? Does everybody know what they need to do to contribute to the success of the business and the QMS? Review at regular intervals. Are the results of the QMS being reviewed and compared against planned results? Is action being taken to improve areas where results are not quite as good as planned? Principles. Management should review the eight principles and how well the system delivers against these. Continual improvement can be initiated through the use of quality policy, quality objective, audit results, analysis of data, corrective and preventative actions, and management review. The requirements cover both the reactive and proactive actions of improvement. 8.5.1 Continual improvement Continual improvement draws together various aspects of the QMS quality policy, quality objectives, audit results, data analysis, corrective actions, preventative actions, management review. The ISO 9001 requires continual improvement of the effectiveness of the QMS. What drives continual improvement? Continual improvement is driven by the objectives set by top management. As a minimum, Quality objective should address 1. The improvement of internal efficiency 2. Individual customer requirements 3. The level of performance that your industry expects There is no requirement that the organisation should set objectives for improvement for all of its processes at any one time. 
it would be unrealistic to expect an organisation to make progress in all potential improvements simultaneously. Each improvement will require the commitment of resources which should be prioritised by top management, especially if investment is required. How to identify what needs improving? Inputs for improvement opportunities are obtained from customer satisfaction, customer complaints and feedback, market research and analysis, inputs from employees, suppliers and other interested parties, internal and external audits of the quality system, records of product or process non-conformances, data from process and product characteristics and their trends. Opportunities for improvement may also be identified on a special project basis. The following are examples of such projects. Non-value-added use of floor space, excessive inspection and testing, excessive handling and storage, excessive failures and cost to quality, machine setup and change over times. The principles of continual improvement. The organisation shall establish, document, implement and maintain QMS and continually improve its effectiveness in accordance with the requirements of the international standard. The organisation shall identify the processes needed for the quality management system and their application throughout the organisation, determine the sequence and interaction of these processes, determine the criteria and methods needed that both the operation and control of these processes are effective, ensure the availability of the resources and information necessary to support the operation and monitoring of these processes, monitor, measure and analyse these processes, implement actions necessary to achieve planned results and continual improvement of these processes. The organisation shall continually improve the effectiveness of the QMS through the use of quality policy, quality objectives, audit results, analysis of data, corrective and preventative actions and management review. Continual improvement requires management support. Top management shall provide evidence of its commitment to the development and implementation of the QMS and continually improving its effectiveness. Continual improvement of the effectiveness of the QMS must be included in the quality policy. Also, management review, which must be carried out at planned intervals, must include the assessment of opportunities for improvement and the need for changes to the QMS, including quality policy and quality objectives. As to the requirements of the process, measurement, analysis and improvement, the organisation shall plan and implement the monitoring, measurement, analysis and improvement processes needed to demonstrate conformity to the product, to ensure conformity of the QMS and to continually improve the effectiveness of the QMS. This shall include determination of applicable methods, including statistical techniques and the extent of their use. Management should continually seek to improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of the processes of the organisation, rather than wait for problems to reveal opportunities for improvement. Improvements can range from small-step ongoing continual improvements to strategic breakthrough improvement projects. The organisation should have a process in place to identify and manage improvement activities of these processes. We've looked at the PDCA cycle and the continual improvement process which should be incorporated into it and involve the following steps. Reasons for improvement. A process problem should be identified and an area for improvement selected, noting the reason for working on it. Current situation. The effectiveness and efficiency of the existing process should be evaluated. Data to discover what type of problems occur most often should be collected and analysed. A specific problem should be selected and an objective for improvement should be set. Analysis. The root causes of the problem should be identified and verified. Identification of possible solutions. Alternative solutions should be explored. The best solution should be selected and implemented. 
i.e. the one that will eliminate the root causes of the problem and prevent the problem from reoccurring. Evaluation of effects. It should then be confirmed that the problem and the root causes have been eliminated or their effects decreased, that the solution has worked and the objective for improvement has been met. Implementation and standardization of a new solution. The old process should be replaced with the improved process, thereby preventing the problem and its root causes from reoccurring. Evaluation of the effectiveness and efficiency of the process with the improvement action completed. The effectiveness and efficiency of the improvement project should be evaluated and consideration should be given for using its solutions elsewhere in the organisation. So to summarise, continual improvement, this is clearly defined in the ISO 9000 clause 8.5.1, continual improvement. Normally, a continual improvement project is initiated by the top management, particularly if there's a cross-functional involvement. A project team is usually formalised and supported with resources to carry out the improvement project. Corrective action. This is clearly specified in the ISO 9001 8.5.2 Corrective Action. Whenever nonconformity is encountered in the QMS, the problems be resolved without undue delay according to the Corrective Action procedure established in the QMS. It's a requirement that the Corrective Action should be effective in eliminating the root cause of the nonconformity to prevent it reoccurring. Preventative Action. This requirement is defined in the ISO 9001 Clause 8.5.3, Preventative Action. Through the analysis of data on processes, products, suppliers, customer feedback, audit, etc., potential non-conformities could be identified and preventative actions taken. Preventative action shall be taken according to the established procedures in the QMS, and it's a requirement to review the effectiveness of such actions taken. The word Kaizen in Japanese can actually be broken down into two separate words where K equals change and Zen equals good, simply meaning change for better. In English, Kaizen is typically applied for implementing continuous improvement. Kaizen is an approach to activity organisation based on common sense, self-discipline, order and economy. The Kaizen method is a strong contributor and fundamental part of a lean production process model in lean manufacturing. It also applies to lean software development. The history of Kaizen begins after World War II when Toyota first implemented quality cycles in its production processes. This was influenced in part by American business and quality management teachers who visited the country. Masakai Imai is a Japanese organisational theorist and management consultant known for his work on quality management, specifically on Kaizen. In 1985, he founded the Kaizen Institute Consulting Group. The Kaizen methods follow 10 specific principles which are described below. 1. Improve everything continuously. 2. Abolish old, traditional concepts. 3. Accept no excuses and make things happen. 4. Say no to the status quo of implementing new methods and assuming they will work. 5. If something is wrong, correct it. Six. Empower everyone to take part in problem solving. Seven. Get information and opinions from multiple people. Eight. Before making decisions, ask why five times to get to the root cause. 9. Be economical. Save money through small improvements and spend the money saved on further improvements. 10. 
Remember that improvement has no limits. Never stop trying to improve. Here we see the questions that should be asked, as in principle 8. The five W's and one H of Kazan. The who, what, where, when and why, as well as the how. The Kazan method strives towards perfection by eliminating waste, muda, in the workplace. The goal of Kazan is production without wastes by improving standardised activities and processes. Industrial engineer Taichi Ono, the father of the Toyota production system, noticed that there was an 80% loss in every process and the value of the process is less than 20%. After analysing manufacturing processes, Teichi Ono was able to identify which steps add value and which ones do not. As a result, he developed a better way for organisations to identify waste with his seven waste model. These wastes include number 1. Delay Waiting or time spent in a queue with no value being added. A large part of an individual product's life is spent waiting to be worked on. 2. Producing more than you need Overproduction usually hides and or generates all the others. It leads to excessive inventory, which then requires the expenditure of resources on storage space and preservation. These activities don't benefit the customer. Number three, overprocessing or undertaking non-value added activity. Overprocessing occurs when more work is performed on a piece than what's required by the customer. 4. Transportation. Each time a product is moved, it stands the risk of being damaged, lost, delayed, etc. as well as being a cost for no added value. Unnecessary movement or motion. Motion refers to the damage that the production process inflicts on the entity that creates the product. This may be over time, wear and tear for equipment and repetitive strain injuries for the workers, or during discrete events accidents that damage equipment and or injure workers. Number six, inventory. Whether it's in the form of raw materials, work in progress or finished goods represent a capital outlay that has not yet produced an income either by the producer or for the consumer. Number seven, production of defects. Defects cause extra cost for reworking the part and can sometimes result in doubling the cost of one single product. 